A San Diego police officer at the center of a sex assault scandal is headed to court for the first time today. An arrest has been made after someone broke into two girls' bedrooms in San Marcos. What led authorities to the man? Mm, a million dollars shattered in pieces. Why that man threw a very expensive vase on the ground. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Lay. And I'm Luis Cruz. It's Tuesday, February 18th, and this is UT San Diego News. The San Diego police officer accused of sexually assaulting women during pat-down searches will be in court for the first time today. Christopher Hayes was arrested last week on charges involving four women. Investigators are also looking into claims by two other women, including one who alleges Hayes forced her to perform a sex act in the back of his patrol car. The 30 year old is currently on unpaid leave from the department and straight ahead in the show. We are talking to the lawyer representing two of the women accusing Hayes of inappropriate conduct. Attorney Dan Gillian will join us in studio, so stay tuned for that. Also in court today is one of the men charged in a corruption case involving a Mexican businessman who was allegedly trying to illegally influence San Diego elections. Ravneet Singh, the owner of a Washington, D.C. campaign services firm, is accused of conspiring to funnel money from a foreign national into local political campaigns. Federal prosecutors say Singh and Ernesto Encinas, a former San Diego police detective, tried to hide the foreign source of $500,000 donated to several San Diego politicians. And we're getting our first look at a man believed to have broken into the bedroom of two young girls in San Marcos over the weekend. Sheriff's deputies say blood left at the scene helped them to identify and arrest Dwayne Farrell yesterday. On Sunday, the 23-year-old was allegedly found leaning over the bed of one girl and nearly half an hour later lying down near the bed of another girl sleeping next to her mother. The Oceanside City Council is expected to vote on a new contract with the Oceanside Police Officers Association in hopes to end a month-long negotiation deadlock. The new contract gives officers a one-time $3,300 stipend instead of a raise. It also caps the city's health care contribution costs at current rates and eliminates a program that requires the city to pay a portion of the employee's share of retirement costs. A woman claims to have killed 22 people before she stopped counting her victims. Police say Miranda Barber and her husband found a man through Craigslist and killed him for the thrill of it. Andrew Spencer explains how her new claims have surprised some and made skeptics out of others. Suspected killer Miranda Barber claims to have killed her first victim when she was just 13 years old. A disturbing thought for those who knew her back then. We were still going to school together and we went to the bowling alley together and stuff like that. Austin Wrench says he went to middle school with Barbara around the time she says she started killing. It's really, it's a weird feeling to think that like, of her other life that she was a part of. Police believe Barbara and her newlywed husband used a Craigslist Companions ad to lure 42-year-old Troy LaFerrera to his death just because they wanted to kill someone together. Both have entered pleas of not guilty. Barbara opened up in a jailhouse interview last Friday claiming to have killed at least 22 people. On Monday, her husband, Elliot, wasn't so forthcoming. I believe the fifth. Do you think, she, do you think she's being honest? Who's to say? Do you think she's lying that she killed 22 people? I didn't say that. Do you think she's telling the truth? Well, don't put words in my mouth. There's no shortage of skeptics of Miranda Barber's motives. I honestly believe you have a young woman who's in a lot of trouble that needs to rationalize her behaviors. And her story. She watches a lot of TV and she made a lot of it up to uh, possibly get a, an insanity plea. But police are looking into it anyway. At this point, we are contacting various state and federal agencies to request assistance to determine the validity of the alleged allegations. North Korea has rejected a new United Nations report that was just released on the country's human rights violations. In a statement, Pyongyang calls it, quote, fabricated and invented, as well as an instrument of political plot. The UN's findings come from a year-long investigation. 
3,000 Americans renounced their citizenship and gave up their U.S. passports last year. That's triple the average for the previous five years, according to an analysis of government data. It appears taxes might have contributed to the spike. Unlike most countries, the U.S. taxes citizens on all income, no matter where it's earned or where they live. Also, filing taxes is becoming more complicated. One expert says reporting taxes can be so difficult, expats are often forced to seek help. Meantime, budget cuts at the IRS could mean less help for you during tax time. The agency is working with fewer employees. The IRS chief says phone lines will be, quote, very busy and you could spend a long time on hold. A recent report by the IRS taxpayer advocate also says the IRS, also, uh, the IRS won't be preparing returns for the elderly or disabled this year. More military families used food stamps to buy their groceries last year. The new numbers come from a Military Officers Association survey. It found nearly $104 million worth of food stamps were used at military commissaries. The survey also found the number of families receiving assistance has grown steadily since the beginning of the recession. One reason for this increase is a 30% unemployment rate among active duty military spouses. The association says spouses who relocate every few years have a harder time finding work in the private sector. We may soon see the backlash following the early retirement of the San Onofre nuclear power plant. Consumers will pay higher power bills if a plan goes forward to spend more than $2 billion to replace the electricity the plant used to generate. Officials from the California Independent System Operation says it needs to rewire the region's transmission grid to improve the flow of electricity to the San Diego region. However, opponents say that's not so. The assessment appears to be overly cautious and wasteful. The next time you attend a Padres game, your smartphone could be guiding you to your seat and offers and even the shortest lines. Petco Park and Dodger Stadium are the first of 20 major league ballparks to install the so-called Apple's Eye Beacon technology. Here's how it works. Fans would get a ping on their iPhones warning of long lines at the concessions near their seats but telling them of shorter lines a short walk away. iBeacon will also ping fans about player lineups, starting pitchers, their records, and other stats. By the way, the app only works with iPhones models 4S and newer. A 50-year-old pier at Nimitz Marine Facility in Point Loma is about to get a $25.5 million facelift. The pier is used by Scripps Institution of Oceanography to service its research ships. The deterioration of the pier can only support about 20% of the weight it was originally designed to handle. The work is scheduled to be uh, completed by the end of next year. Most of the project will be funded using state and UCSD campus money. Uh, meantime, UC San Diego is ranked number eight in a list of top 10 NIH funded biomedical research institutions. UCSD pulled in $362 million during the 2013 fiscal year, down close to $33 million from the previous year. Johns Hopkins University was ranked number one after receiving nearly $575 million in 2013. The list was compiled by Fierce Biotech. A South Florida artist is now facing charges for dropping a vase valued at $1 million. And it was all caught on camera. Oopsies. The defendant <laughs> reportedly told police he destroyed the vase at Ai Weiwei's <laughs> exhibit in protest. He was upset because only international art is shown at the gallery. What's ironic is that Ai Weiwei has previously destroyed bases as part of his work. The suspect is charged with criminal mischief. <laughs> I would do anything to have Luis say oopsies one more time. <laughs> Well, it's going to be a mild one out today. Here's a look outside Mission Bay. We'll have partly sunny skies this afternoon, but this morning as you wake up, you're going to notice these clouds and some fog along the coast. The low clouds and fog will return later this evening. We are going to top out at 63 degrees today, 66 tomorrow with clouds overhead. Then we do warm up close to 10 degrees Thursday to about 73 with mostly sunny skies. Overnight lows will be in the 50s with the exception of Thursday when we drop into the upper 40s there. Ooh, burr. Uh, your five-day forecast is up at the half hour. Well, you can call this next story a very happy yeah. reunion. Two paramedics met a baby named after them. 
doctor. They helped save his life in the back of an ambulance. Yesterday, the parents of Xavier Stefan Morgan Pistana took him to the Oceanside Fire Station to meet the crew who saved his life. Back on December 18, Pistana was born prematurely and he had no pulse. There he is. Uh, but Fire Captain Glenn Morgan gave the newborn CPR and then firefighter paramedic Stephen Choi placed a tiny mask over the baby's face and started pumping uh, while rushing him to the hospital. When I heard the sirens pull up to the house, I was just so relieved that <laughs> the firemen were there, really. Um, and I'm just thankful that they saved my boy's life because it was a very um, touch and go situation and we're very thankful to everybody on the team and always will be and they're like part of my family now. Xavier's parents honored the rescuers by giving their son the names of the two firefighters who saved his life. Xavier's mother says he weighed in at eight pounds, seven ounces at his doctor's visit last week. So he's doing well. Oh, is he so sweet. My goodness. Local heroes indeed. All right. The San Diego State men's basketball team hits the hardwood today after dropping a spot in the national rankings. And it was a golden moment for a pair of U.S. skaters after they waltz to glory at the Winter Olympics. That's all coming up in your sports report. Keep it right here on UT San Diego News in the morning. Thank you for staying with us this morning. I'm Luis Cruz. And I'm Christina Lay. Good morning, folks. It is Tuesday, February 18. Now, today, a San Diego police officer accused of sexually assaulting women during traffic stops will be formally charged. Joining us this morning is Dan Gillian, an attorney for two of the women that are accusing Officer Christopher Hayes of the misconduct. Good morning, Good morning. Dan. So what are your clients saying happened to them? Well, there's, there's two. One's very, very serious. So she's uh, alleging that he required her to give him oral sex in his car in exchange for leniency. Um, and then the, the other one, it was more of a kind of a, a, a just a bad pullover and then held her there, um, hitting on her, asking her if he could come to her house, that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, one is serious, civil, mm -hmm. civil rights violation. The other one's very egregious. It's a sexual battery. Now, would, do you think that this is a widespread problem in the, the police department? Is this just an isolated incident, you think? Well, I don't think it's isolated. I, I think that the bigger problem is that there's no real enforcement department unit within the um, the police um, that is basically telling the, the troops out there, the guys on the ground, that if you do something like this, we're going to find out, we're going to catch you. Um, the, re the reason I say that is back in 2003, um, when Chief Lansdowne came in to, um, he became the chief of the police, he did away with what's called the Professional Standards Unit. It was an anti-corruption anti unit within mm. the police department. And that was what really went out and found the bad cops. Okay. And, it, and everyone knew, all the guys knew at the police department that, you know, if a, if a prostitute solicits you for sex, she may actually be planted by the PSU. And so it was kind of like in, when I was in the military, there was a rule you can't, you can't, you know, use drugs. But they also had a random urinalysis. Mm -hmm. And that random urinalysis and the threat of getting caught is really what caught a lot of them, kept a lot of the guys clean. So that's the widespread problem is that really there's a low morale because of the fact that these guys are out there doing stuff, getting away with it, and no one's really watching them. Mm. Over the weekend, the chief proposed bringing out an inside, outside auditor. Yeah. What do you think about that? I, I think it's really, um, it's just, to me, it's a smoke screen. It's nothing more than his seven, seven step plan that he implemented after Arevalos. It's really just a distraction. He talked about being an $80,000 audit. And to me, an $80,000 audit might pay for a part-time paralegal who won't have access to all the information that he or she needs. What he needs to do is put back in the anti-corruption unit that he disbanded back in 2003. That's clearly what he needs to do. He needs to say, listen, I made a mistake. We clearly needed that thing because as soon as I removed it, we started having all these problems. Mm. Let's put that back in and stop talking about an independent audit. I mean, that's just a, that's a smoke screen in my opinion. Mm. So this afternoon, Officer Hayes is gonna be in court for the first time. Are you going to be there? I, I may be there. I'm actually starting a trial today on another case, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to try to slip away and see what happens. I don't, you know, it, arraignments are usually quite boring um, because he's just going to say not guilty, you know, and um, that's going to be about it. There won't be any evidence shared. Um, if, if the DA went for a higher bail amount, and I don't know if that's going to happen, but if the DA asked for a higher bail amount, they may shed some, they might talk about some of the evidence to kind of convince the ju judge that maybe bail, higher bail is required, but it's going to be a fairly benign event today. Mm. 
Except what, for the media. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what, what do you think will happen to Hayes? Do you think he'll quit the department? Oh, he'll, I think certainly he'll quit. I mean, he, he you know, it's like basically, are you going to get fired or are you going to quit first? I mean, he'll quit. And, uh, but his problem really is Bonnie Germanis. Um, she's very, very good at what she does, and I think that she's going to kind of be flexing her muscle on this one, so I think he's um, in trouble. Mm, very interesting. I just feel like this story is just constantly developing, too. Well, put so. the PSU back in, and we may not have these problems. Mm. That's, that's what's needed, an anti-corruption unit that was there in 2003 and got disbanded as soon as Chief Lansdowne came in. Mm. If that were put back in, I think we could, you know, basically rest comfortably. Okay. Dan, tell us a little bit about the legal proceedings in, in this particular case. So you have, I guess, what's the criminal case, mm -hmm. but you're involved in separate proceedings. Yeah, so the, yeah, it, there's going to be a criminal case where the victims are witnesses for, the, for a case brought on behalf of the people of California. And then those victims each have their own civil rights cases um, for basically, you know, battery and so, so forth. And they can pursue those. They have more time to pursue them, you know. And you, what we try to do is we try to wait until after the criminal cases are over before you pursue those. Because as soon as you start saying that this victim is seeking monetary damages in the civil court system, a lot of criminal defense attorneys like to say, oh, you're just saying this for money. And as we saw in the Arevalos case, you know, the defense attorney for Arevalos really went after these women and targeted them. Mm. And would um, you know she actually played the Katy Perry song about last Friday night during closing mm. argument to argue that these victims were just party girls looking looking for a good time, mm. and then we saw with um, more recently with Jane Doe she goes from a hero to suddenly being trailed by uh, a, a private investigators with cameras and being accused of bribing um, Anthony Revelos with her panties. That's what the uh, mm -hmm. the, the city attorney's yeah. been doing. And <clears throat> the problem with that it really kind of sends a signal to women out there that might want to come forward and say, yeah, he did it to me that they're going to be targeted themselves, and that's really unfortunate. And that, that causes big problems for our society. And isn't that the feeling right mm -hmm. now? A lot of women are saying that they're afraid. If they're sure. getting pulled over, they don't want to pull over. I know that we heard from an attorney over the weekend that said the same thing. So yeah. it's, it's very what, unfortunate. What if they weren't believed? What if she were not believed? Now, this, now she's got an angry cop, at, um, you know, it, not just the guy that was going to be hitting on her and, and uh, abusing her. Now, now he's angry, mm -hmm. and that's very scary for a woman, woman to bring that forward. Absolutely. Do you think more women will come forward in this I do case? think they will, and I think they are, by the way. I mean, we talk about seven. I think there's plenty more out there that we haven't heard about. But they will come forward, but it's going to, you know, it's going to be a strength in numbers. It's going to be another Mayor Filner. And where that number will stop, I don't know. But, you know, Mr. Hayes, was, he was quite egregious with what he did. I mean, the spectrum from relatively benign, you know, stops where he hits on women all the way up to sexual assaults, that's a big spectrum. Anthony Revelos' spectrum is kind of narrow. Um, what mm. he did, but this was this is bad. What um, what Officer Hayes did. So I think that there's going to be more women out there that are going to come forward and share their stories. And where they, they end up on that spectrum, you know, who knows? All right, Dan Gillian for us this morning. Thank you so much for being uh, here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, uh, United Airlines is now investigating why a plane just about to land started shaking wildly. Renee Marsh has details on this very turbulent flight. In a split second, without warning, United Airlines Flight 1676, with more than 100 people on board, was violently tossed in midair. There was a lot of screaming and and uh, a lot of lot of hollering and things like that going on. The incident so jarring, passengers say one woman hit the ceiling so hard it cracked the panel over her head. Severe turbulence rattled everyone on board the flight from Denver to Billings, Montana, forcing the captain to declare a medical emergency. Five passengers were rushed to local hospitals. One remains in intensive care. The others were treated and released. One passenger says the turbulence appeared to have even taken the flight crew by surprise. I think they were trying to assess things themselves. So, they, you know, they just didn't really offer any explanation in it because of what happened so quickly. Just released video shows what can happen when a bus driver loses control. Here it is. In Boise, Idaho, last month, you can see the bus run off the road and take out light poles in tree. You're about to see it here. The camera goes to black before the bus hit a building. Look at this. Investigators charged the driver with negligent driving. They say he was driving drowsy. One passenger on the bus suffered minor injuries. Mm. 
Well, let's get over to weather on this Tuesday morning, shall we? Here is a peek outside Carlsbad. Now, if you're along the coast, you're going to notice these low clouds in this uh, pretty dense fog, as you can see. Things will clear up for some sun this afternoon before the clouds return uh, tonight, especially along the coast. If you're headed out into the water, it's about 56 degrees today. Today and tomorrow we will stay in the mid 60s before we warm right back up into the mid 70s toward the last half of the week, as you can see there. Plenty of clouds today and tomorrow, then mostly sunny skies Thursday and Friday. But take a look at Saturday, 76 degrees. 80 if 80s if you're in uh, inland with plenty of sunshine as well. All right, stay with us. We're going to take you inside a local school that has some cool presidential mm. memorabilia. 